parking lot of what used to be an allied signal plant that made a pesticide. As you can see, no one's really done anything with this place in a very, very long time. Weeds are going up through the cracks. And, and as I pan over where the plant was, you can see there's absolutely nothing there. And I'll give you a better shot of that in just a little while. And what you may not realize is this is some of the most expensive property in the United States. And why would that be? Why would this derelict plant be more expensive than property in Manhattan? And this right here is why it is so expensive. The story I'm going to talk about starts in the 1940s. DuPont had a dynamite plant here in this town, and it employed thousands of people until right after World War I, and they closed the plant. Thousands of people moved away. The town pretty much turned into a ghost town. And then a company called Two Buys moved in. Now, Two Buys opened up a plant that made rayon in uh, the 1940s, I believe it was. One of the unions, the machinist union, I believe it, it was, at Two Bives decided they weren't making quite enough money. And so they went on strike. They set up lines around the plant, picket lines. Of course, the plant management brought in strike breakers. The union members were very angry about this. Well, they went in during the night and smashed the machinery. Well, there was rayon all through all the piping, liquid rayon. And when they smashed the machinery, it solidified all through all the machinery in the plant. Now, what the machinists didn't know was that a new process had been invented. Their plant was actually the only one left in the country using the old technology. The company, Two Buys, actually had a plant using the new technology in Savannah that was under capacity. And now there was no way that a repair to the plant they had just wrecked could possibly ever pay for itself. So the two buyers management came the next day and said, if you came and worked for free, we would not reopen this plant and shut it down, put everybody out of work. Before it was done and said, 20,000 people moved out of this little town. It was a horrible economic time. People were eat, uh, prostitutes, drug trade. Everything was going on here. People were wearing sidearms outside like you see in the Wild West movies. It was absolutely horrible. The, the crime rate was through the ceiling. Until another company moved in, Allied Signal. They opened up a new plant, this time making pesticides called Keepon. Allied Signal's Keepon plant but many plants at this era was not necessarily uh, friendly for its workers as far as safety goes. They had uh, no controls on where the chemical went. The workers, it was described, would come home looking like a sugar donut most days. And the material was spread all over the place. Uh, there were no controls keeping it. it confined to the work areas necessarily. And sometimes it would, uh, would go into the ground. Uh, no controls over that. Even large quantities of it. Until uh, the late 60s, early 70s, when it was discovered through some research by someone that apparently 
this is a carcinogen. And being a carcinogen, one of the employees discovered, you can sue. So he did. And he took the company to court. Many lawyers got very, very rich. He didn't really. The company went out of business. The plant did. And uh, they walked off and left the mess. All the employees of the plant got nothing out of the settlement because when you divided it amongst all the different employees, there wasn't anything to get. But the attorneys got a lot of money. What ended up happening was this. One very expensive field, because it was turned over to the Superfund. Millions and millions and millions of dollars were spent to do what they call remediation on this area. The whole top level of soil was removed and taken and, and treated as extremely hazardous waste. And because the problem is, this is only a mile or so from the James River and drains right into it. And not only is that the case, but it is literally down the street from downtown Hopewell. The uh, second red light there is in front of the courthouse. <laughs> it is just right there. Now, here's the object lesson. Six months ago, someone did a study expecting there to be a huge amount of people that died from cancer because, after all, they were pretty much wearing ketone their whole time they worked at the company. Guess what? No higher rate of cancer among the employees of this plant than there was in the general population. When this plant was operational, this town had over 45,000 people living here. There are less than 20,000 people living here now. And it is decreasing every year. So, two times, we have seen decisions by people that are supposed to be good for you, supposed to be on the side of right, wreck whole economies, and put thousands of people out of work tear up families, uproot them, move them to other places. Lord knows how many families they tore apart. Lord knows how many people didn't even live through the experience. So, so where's the lesson here? What are we to learn from this? Because it's easy to stand behind the cause, you know. It's easy to be right. It's easy to stand there and say, oh my God, it's radioactive, we're all going to turn into fish. It's a little harder to do the research, to do the homework, to find out when you're correct as well as right. You don't want to do this. You don't want to leave an open sore. Because now they know it doesn't cause cancer, but this is still going on. They're going to still do this from now on. They're still monitoring this. There's still thousands and thousands of dollars every month being spent here for nothing. And the only good that's come out of it is the city has a place to dump gravel. Because that's all that's happening here. Think about it. What bandwagon are you on? <laughs>